This is just beautiful. I've been a naturalist for 40 years. I've been a wildlife presenter for well over a decade. And I get the chance to work with the very best wildlife cameramen in the world. And this is some of the most astonishing footage. Intimate, beautiful behavior of animals that are quite difficult to film. But for me, the most amazing thing is, this footage is not filmed by a professional, but somebody who does it in his spare time. Well, today I'm in for a treat. I'm at Pansanger Park in Hertfordshire, and I'm going to spend the day with a man who took all those wonderful shots, and I can't wait. After a successful career in motorsport engineering, Russell Savory now uses his knowledge and passion to film wildlife. That is the most amazing bit of kit. What are you after today? Well, after water voles today. So it's a simple bit of kit. Basically, it's a brick. <laughs> OK. Uh, with cameras. So we've got four cameras that we can film underwater with. These will get the, the lovely, what I call, silver bullet, which is the water vole coming towards the camera. Underwater. Underwater. All that air trapped in the, in the fur, which is fantastic. And the ones on the top here, we should catch the lovely little bow wave as we're paddling along. Russell's love of racing and wildlife began at an early age. What I used to do is get a, a, one of those beach pencil boxes that used to have school, take off the lid of that, and then you were led, uh, uh, left with two little uh, runners that the, 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 the top would slide on, and I'd put two wood lights, one in each <laughs> of those, and race them. So there, there becomes my motorsport career, which has been, what, 40-odd years, I guess. And, and my first interest really into picking up, as kids do, everything from worms for the garden to beetles and bugs and everything else like that. And one thing that I would give everything up for is my wildlife. My wildlife is, is very, very important to me. That's where I want to be and that's what I want to spend my time doing. Favourite animal? It's got to be the water vole. It is a cold day. It's probably freezing, maybe minus one or two. Are they like to be active enough? Um, I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> I like your optimism, sir. Yeah, so we'll see how we go. I've film, filmed him in the frost before. Once the camera brick is in, Russell uses his secret weapon to attract the water voles. They love a bit of apple, but really to increase our chances there, I'm going to put um, about half a litre of apple juice, which will go on to there, spread down the river. Many of us have admired the Planet Earth films and seen the extraordinary lengths the crews go to to get those killer sequences. Russ's dedication is something else, and the creations he uses to get the shots are second to none. Check this out. Russ, I have to say, this kit is bonkers. What on earth did you design it for? Well, it was a way of getting out to the hares silently. Um, basically, very early in the morning, in the darkness, creep out. Um, <laughs> well, I do fall asleep in it sometimes, actually. Um, and then wake up, but basically, it's to creep forward slowly and get closer and closer and closer to the hairs. If you do it slowly, all of a sudden, you, you can be within 20 feet of them. And uh, you're down at their level. It's, it's, it's all about eye level. You get the best shots at that, really. And it's worked? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's really, really, really good. Yeah, I've got some superb sort of uh, boxing. Um, and the, the hair shake, which I quite like, is, you know, they stand up when, in the morning with they've got the dew on them. You know, they sit up there and shake like mad. So you can get all that stuff in slow-mo at the right level. The hairmobile is genius, but not all of Russell's techniques are so complex. Often his best shots are down to a simple idea and a lot of patience. One of my favourite birds, the most amazing lifestyle, of course, is the cuckoo, and it's a bird that's really hard to see. It's got a persecution complex, but you've had incredible encounters. I managed to see a cuckoo that uh, was perched in a tree, and I flicked out a mealworm to see whether there'd be any interest in it, and nothing at all. But I was in my little four before, and as I turned around and drove away, I looked in the mirror, and this cuckoo comes straight down. I thought, I gotcha. And within two days, I actually got it onto a post about 10 feet away from the car. 10 feet? 10 feet away from the car. And then, <laughs> then I got, a, got a good, an old chunk of a, a branch, I literally just wrapped that across the uh, screen, and there we were, cuckoo stuck on the end of it. And it would come down every single day, in the this morning. This is you know. the shyest of birds that yeah. is so difficult to get close. Yeah. Well, we're back at the riverbank 
and both Russ and I have had tantalising glimpses of water vole, and you can see actually where they pop in and out of the water. Um, they haven't been persuaded to come down and take any apple yet, but sun's still up, we've got time. Russell has won awards for his wildlife photography, but for him, it's all about getting to know his subject. What I like to do is get close to it, don't have to use a huge, great long lens, and really it's a matter of spending the time. You get out of it what you put in it, and wildlife it will come to you. A few favourite moments? Yeah, I, I, my, my favourite moment is spending time with the voles, but in the water, and eventually I ended up with them on my leg. Right? <laughs> but the, more than that was I actually could feel the heartbeat of the water throng on my leg. Not only has Russell filmed some close encounters, he's also managed to capture water voles exhibiting some unusual behaviour, climbing trees and eating bark. The site here is owned by Tarmac, who work with the Wildlife Trust. We caught up with their water vole conservation officer. And of course you spend your whole professional life working with these animals, but we rarely see them like this. Absolutely not, no, no. And what a shot that is, seeing a water vole going into one of its burrows underwater like that, going, using one of the underwater entrances. To see the water vole balancing on a, a small branch like that, to, to witness this sort of behaviour, to record this sort of behaviour, uh, it's incredible. Russell's footage is fantastic. Our own BBC cameraman was suitably impressed. Graham, you make a living as a wildlife cameraman, and we've been filming together for the best part of 15 years. What do you think of Russell's shots? Incredible, aren't they? Yeah, it's just super behaviour that he's filmed, and wonderful innovation to get those shots. Uh, you need to be not just a good engineer, but have a really good knowledge of natural history behaviour, good field craft. As the day comes to a close, did Russell's cameras manage to spot a water vole? Well, Russ, it has been a very cold day, but they could have come in. Yeah, there's a chance, actually. Um, you know, coming up to this, you've seen a little bit of activity there on the island. You won't know until, of course, you download all the action from the cameras. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that tonight, obviously. Just uh, eight cameras, and it takes a little while. <laughs> and um, anything else that you haven't got with water voles? Underwater, in the trees, anything more you're after? I think the next mission, I guess, is going to be more underwater stuff around the burrows and those sort of things that we're doing. Water vole or not, I've still had an amazing day and can't wait for Russell's next venture. <laughs>